we have talked about some of the other works outside of Daniel that are considered to be apocalyptic. In the New Testament, we can think most clearly of the book of Revelation. However, some have seen in Mark 13 kind of a little apocalypse, sort of apocalyptic literature inserted into the gospel. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. Skipping down to verse 5, Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. As for yourselves, beware, for they will hand you over to councils, and you will be beaten in synagogues, and you will stand before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them. And the good news must first be proclaimed to all nations. When they bring you to trial and hand you over, do not worry beforehand about what you are to say, but say whatever is given you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. So you can hear some of the similarity, the flavor of the language that is used. In the near term, people like N.T. Wright argue that Jesus is talking about uh, the coming events that eventually take place in 66 through 70 CE when there was a Jewish revolt and a Roman invasion and ultimate destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. At the same time, it could also be talking about events far in the future. As part of this little apocalypse, one sees language about the desolating sacrilege or the abomination that desolate, desolates. We see this in the book of Daniel we see this in chapter 9, where the, the uh, enemy king will make sacrifice and offering cease, and in their place shall be an abomination that desolates until the decreed end is poured out upon the desolator. And we have seen how this lines up with the kind of actions of Antiochus Epiphanes who established a pagan uh, sacrifice and worship within the temple itself. Another reference is in Daniel 11.31. Forces sent by him shall occupy and profane the temple and fortress. They shall abolish the regular burnt offering and set up the abomination that makes desolate. And again in verse 12.11. From the time that the regular burnt offering is taken away and the abomination that desolates is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. We also see in Mark 13, 14, but when you see the desolating sacrilege set up where it ought not to be, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. Now this cannot refer to the same events that took place in the second century BCE. But rather, 
it could refer to the Romans coming into the city and setting up their own standards. Those standards that were carried by the army represented uh, or were dedicated to the gods of the Romans. So again, you see that this apocalyptic language is fairly flexible in how it is replied. Jesus goes on to say, um, if anyone says to you at that time, look, here is the Messiah, or look, there he is, do not believe it. False messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce signs and omens to lead astray, if possible, the elect. But be alert, I have already told you everything. In fact, this does happen. Uh, probably the most famous uh, example of this is in the 2nd century CE, in the year 135, when uh, Bar Kokhba claimed to be the Messiah, and many followed him, and he started a second revolt against the Romans, which was put down. And there were numerous other people who were claiming to be the Messiah in the first century and the second century as well. And so you can see Jesus addressing those issues, but he is saying, no, I have already told you what you need to know. We see also in Daniel 7 language of one like the Son of Man. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And it is to this one like a Son of Man that the kingdom is given. And we see again in 27, uh, the kingdom given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. The language that Jesus uses to describe himself as the Son of Man harkens back to Daniel 7. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. and The stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. We see similar language about the Son of Man as it is reflected in Daniel 7 when Jesus is on trial before the high priest and the Sanhedrin. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. This also is from Daniel. You can see parallels to this in uh, some of the other gospel passages. And of course, the language of the Son of Man, it just permeates the gospels. It's, it's everywhere. And here we need to think, uh, not necessarily in every single context, but certainly in most of them when Jesus is referring to himself, echoes of Daniel 7. Another theme that comes forth very strongly in the Gospels that is also strong in the book of Daniel is the theme of the kingdom of God. And in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall this kingdom be left to another people. It shall crush all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever. And then also in Daniel, I make a decree 
uh, for he is the living God enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed and his dominion has no end. And then also in chapter 7, then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. We also see this language, for example, not just here, but as some examples in the book of Mark. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And here it is clear that the good news is the kingdom of God. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. In Mark 10, But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me, do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. And in Mark 14, Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So as you are no doubt aware, the, the idea of the kingdom of God or the phraseology is very, very frequent in the Gospels. The kingdom of God as a phrase is found in Matthew five times, Mark 14 times, Luke 32 times, fewer times in John, just a couple. In Matthew, the dominant term is, 30, is kingdom of heaven, 31 times. And this is basically synonymous. It's sort of uh, among, among Jews, to what they would often avoid saying the name of God or the word God. Um, and so kingdom of heaven is a, is a sort of a workaround. It, it's basically saying the same thing. We also find in Matthew and in Luke reference, frequent reference, references to just the kingdom or my kingdom or my father's kingdom or some other phrase. Uh, in John, Jesus talks about my kingdom three times. And it is in Daniel that you really have this emphasis on the coming kingdom of God. 